All right, so it appears as though uh, my time in Coco is coming to a close. It's definitely been an adventure, that's for sure. Hanging out next to this giant riverboat and everything, but um, the I finally was able to get a marina that I really wanted to go to down in Miami area, northern Miami, and I called them incessantly and they said that the only place they can put me is on the on the, the protection wall essentially that's entering into their marina which is usually where the, the giant boats like this guy go but uh, they had space in it and really the intent there is to one be able to get myself my foot in the door so that uh, as soon as a slip does open up I will have priority because I will already be there um, and two, I mean, just to get down there, obviously move on from here, try the new area for sure. But, uh, I mean, the concern they had was that the slip itself is a little rocky because it's not on the, you know, it's part of the wall uh, that protects from, you know, boats on the open water. But it's on the inside part of the wall. And so I realized that it's pretty much the exact same as where I'm at right now. <laughs> so, um that's exciting uh, but i just discovered right now it's a friday and uh they said you, i mean as long as i come immediately i can go and get it and so uh saturday here i go looks like it'll be about a 150 to 180 mile trip um should be able to cover it in one day but i'm gonna try to wake up bright and early to make sure i can do it in one day and then I'll do it in a day, hopefully. Um, but I'm gonna do whatever I can right now to prepare for that. Um, getting all my bumpers set up uh, to be able to check out and fly out early in the morning. And also I'm gonna scrape the barnacles off the bottom of the boat. <laughs> uh, yeah, here we go. sixth way to Miami and it appears that my engine has overheated um, I got the death beep again but apparently it was something even different so I've gotten the death beep for a lot of things at this point um, but now I'm anchoring down to keep myself secure and give the engine time to stop overheating uh, so there's us anchored out here hopefully that stays hopefully I'm not actually going anywhere um, but now I uh, I 
actually let me test that yeah good enough um so now i have to let the engine cool off and diagnose why it's overheating i'm pretty sure i know it's i mean we got about i don't know uh 30 miles down and almost you know about an hour into this trip and that's when it started overheating um i'm guessing just like every other issue it's a problem with the filter but i just uh challenge is i don't know where the filter is for the water cooling system coming into the engine and so i've been doing some uh google research to figure that out and uh no luck so far but i'm gonna keep looking i hope i mean either way i have to wait for the engine to cool anyway because it's burning up um and but otherwise i mean i gotta just figure out what the issue is assess whether or not miami is going to be possible um and otherwise after it cools perhaps figure out a different destination um yeah so after a bit of research it looks like my boat is uh the water there is no specific water filter for a stern drive boat stern drive is partially in the boat partially behind the boat um so i have to figure out other potential reasons why i might be overheating um so i'll keep digging doing some research but otherwise i'm just gonna cruise on now because i think we cooled off get a little bit further keep a close eye on the overheating and then anchor somewhere else i guess yeah <laughs> always been the case uh, when it rains it pours with me uh, so when I, the boat overheated um, I had to uh, basically I was trying to figure out how to fix it and I looked around and discovered that there is no filter for the raw water coming in and so uh, still have to figure out why it overheated and now I'm going to watch very closely the engine temperature as we move forward um, but the, uh, while I was overheated, I had the uh, anchor down, and the anchor, obviously, so I didn't float off into the shore, um, and I reeled that back in when we left, but it uh, looks like I didn't tie it off, and that is obviously a complete me mistake. Um, 
And so the anchor, the line ended up trailing behind my boat and at some point part of the rope got wrapped around my port side left uh, propeller, left engine. And uh, that's why it, I could feel it jumping for a while and I didn't know why and that's why. And so then the, uh, <laughs> the, I, the guy helping me refuel at Vero Beach uh, told me that I had that line caught under and said I should definitely get that undone. And he's like, oh, I know a diver. He's actually right there. And he was like two houses over. And so a uh, diver came right over, uh, undid it in like 15 minutes while the boat was getting refueled. Uh, and... <laughs> And so that resolved that issue. I've lost the anchor. So it seems like apparently the anchor hooked on something and the boat pulled so hard it tore off one of the uh, metal links in the chain, which is surprising. It broke a link in the chain and not the rope itself, but that's what happened. Um, but again, when it rains, it pours. Uh, when I uh, got that kit taken care of, all the line pulled in and the fuel all fueled up. Um, I tried to start the engines and the port side engine didn't start and I tried it six or seven times and it didn't start and so it looked like I might have been stranded here and it was after about 15 minutes that I was able to start it. I don't know why I wasn't able to before but we got to the point and it worked. Oh man. Um, so now we uh, watch the temperatures closely but we got a full tank and we're going to start cruising. Hopefully we can cut off most of the chunk before we get to Miami and I just need to make sure not to turn the engine off along the way. Here we go. This day was a lot more stressful than I was expecting. Um, as we had covered earlier, the engine overheated. Uh, I, it's possible I need to get this boat lifted out and impeller needs to be replaced. Looks like I got burned even though I put on sunblock like three, four times today. Um, the After it got overheated, I had to sit there and wait for two and a half hours and Apparently that wasn't, even if I had that extra two and a half, I still might not have made it to my destination by five o'clock. I think right now I'm about 60 miles away from uh, the marina I'm moving to, um, but it's about four o'clock and the marina guy is going to be gone by five, so I have all kinds of things to figure out that uh, just wouldn't really be effectively possible. Um, so I got to West Palm Beach and I uh, asked the attendant who I was just fueling up my, my motors, uh, he, I asked him how, how long would it take to get all the way to Miami or North Miami and he said six hours and so as it's already four then that didn't really uh, make sense for me to gamble on so I'm going to stay here for a night and then continue on my way tomorrow um, but I otherwise it's uh, one of the challenges is now whatever I turn on the motors um, the left engine doesn't start for like five to ten minutes uh, 
Like if I try, it just sputters. Um, clearly it means there's something wrong with it that should probably be addressed. It's odd how letting the boat sit for a few months uh, broke it more than it did preserve it, which is, I guess, a lesson. Um, so I'm gonna, I mean, I hope I can make it tomorrow. If my left engine doesn't turn on, then that's a whole different story. Um, but I'm um, in Palm Beach. Uh, made it with good timing because now it's raining. See all that rain? And uh, I need to clean up, put my stuff away. Uh, yeah, put some aloe on. And maybe adventure this little town here. Yeehaw. about an hour uh, trying to start my left port engine and I was stubborn that's for sure um, I'm guessing there's a problem with the battery but I'm no expert and so I really just need to get this thing to Miami to the destination marina park it and Go through another round of uh, Q&A and potentially buying a new battery, figuring out how to test the battery, but I need to get to Miami without the engines being switched off, otherwise I might be stranded somewhere. So I'm going to push her. Uh, she's got a cooling issue, so I, uh, at least the left engine has a cooling issue, and I'm guessing that's related to the battery, but I'm not certain. Um, but I will continue to push her. Uh, but making sure to keep an eye that it doesn't get up over 200 degrees engine temperature. Uh, yeah, this trip's been full of unexpected challenges and now I was actually going to try to take the quick way, uh, which was going to go out onto the ocean because there is going to be a lot of slow zones on this 60 mile trip. <laughs> 
I'm guessing it might take four or five, maybe six hours to go 60 miles, and yes, that means 10 miles an hour, uh, because the there are just so many uh, residential areas where there's just narrow waterways with a ton of houses and all, presumably a lot of boats uh, belonging to those houses all lined up along the or the uh, waterway. We're getting into the South Florida extra uninhabited zone, inhabited zone, and uh, it's part of the deal, but uh, I'm gonna get it to the marina safely. I won't take it out on the ocean because then I'd need to probably open up the engines to take advantage of that, and so for the sake of not wanting to overheat the engines, it's at the end of the day all right to be going slower. Um, but we're already started in this example of slow zone and I mean here's Palm Beach West Palm Beach and there's as you can see there are boats everywhere um, so that's part of the deal I guess here we go though about four or five hours we um, so I am making good time gone about I think 20 miles so about one third of the way in one hour um, I don't expect to continue at that pace and actually it's gonna be another 10 minutes uh, before I can even move uh, so it'll be about an hour 15 in by the time this bridge here opens uh, it's currently eight feet clearance and my boat is around 13 feet tall so that's uh, not gonna happen and sadly, it's not one of those bridges you can request to have them open. It's one you gotta wait uh, for every quarter hour and three quarters hour. So every 15 and every 45 of the hour. And it's currently 35 and I got here at 25. Uh, but I can't turn off the engine because I might not be able to turn it back on. And so I'm just sitting here with the engines in idle for 20 minutes, 10 more minutes. And then we got about 40 more miles to go, but fortunately it's only going to be 8.45. Um, and I got to get there by 5, so what, 8.5 hours to make it 40 miles. So I just got pulled over by the boat police. Uh, as I already knew, this boat displaces a lot of water, and so the top speed is 25 miles an hour around here uh, for the sake of manatees, but uh, the maximum wave height is 15 inches, which, I mean, I would go like 10 miles an hour and it gets that high, so big boats like mine are supposed to go slow forever, and I think the uh, Fort Lauderdale boat police are patrolling this channel constantly so we got to make sure that anytime whatsoever it looks like they might be on their way I need to slow down uh, but now I'm gonna put it around five miles an hour and I still got about 15 to 20 miles to go so maybe I'll get there in four hours still in range but uh, exactly what I was trying to avoid was taking up the entire day driving this boat This was a long combination of days trip. Um, so today I woke up and the uh, the port engine didn't want to turn on and it took about an hour for it to turn on. Um, and then we got cruising and I decided not to go on the ocean because I wasn't, I didn't want to overheat the engine because uh, I'm guessing that the batteries got an issue and uh, because of that um, the um, sorry, just blanked. Uh, because the, the battery had an issue, the cooling also had problems, so I didn't want to necessarily push the engine too hard. 
Um, but I ended up taking the waterway a while. It was only a 60 mile trek trip, uh, but two thirds of the way, uh, I, I got 40 miles down and it took me about four hours. So really going about 10 miles an hour. And really for the last 15 miles, I just, uh, there was an, there was a, a, a opening out to the ocean to get out of the intercoastal hot, uh, waterway. Um, and it, I mean, it was ridiculously uh, slow. And I got pulled over by a boat cop who said that I, you know, I need to go even slower than most boats because my boat, my boat's bigger than most traveling on that waterway um, and so and that means I push a lot of water displace a lot of water and so I just ended up traveling the last 15 miles on the ocean and cruised along next to uh, Fort Lauderdale and uh, sunny Isles and northern Miami and that's where I am now I made it to Miami I'm at this marina, uh, it's got new challenges, uh, apparently they don't have Wi-Fi, so I'm going to have to look to see if I can get maybe another backup mobile hotspot uh, Wi-Fi connection, or maybe I'll just stay at this marina for a month, I, I don't really know, um, but that's, that's where I'm at now. Uh, the marina is basically full, and so the only slip I got was... Uh, was not uh, didn't have 30 amp power which is my boat has 50 amp power and so I had to go and buy a $170 50 amp to 30 amp converter which is crazy uh, and I, I actually checked online it's still like 140 plus if you don't buy it at the super expensive boat stores um, but uh, I saved the receipt and if I can move to a different slip soon enough, I might just return that because that is a gigantic expenditure. Um, otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. The water is super clear. I can actually see my motors that are still um, underwater because <laughs> that's another issue that they're not elevating. They can't, I can't lift them anymore out of the water. I'm curious if that has to do with the battery, um, but I don't know, 8,000 problems. Um, so uh, the water's super clear. That's I mean, should be super easy to go and clean it, scrape barnacles, see, find the barnacles, uh, and dive. You know, go and check out the water. Um, but <laughs> crazy, it's only it's 4:30, and only half of my adventure for the day is completed. Because now I'm gonna fly back to Orlando, take an Uber from Orlando to Coco, which is expensive. Um, and then pick up my truck and drive the truck down here, which is another three hour drive. So I actually don't expect to be here and done until to able to go to sleep at, until 2 a.m. Um, and what's crazy is I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning. I uh, just couldn't sleep past that and uh, started trying to deck out my boat to leave early. But as we all remember, it didn't work so conveniently. So it's, it looks like it'll be a 22 hour day at the end of the day. Um, might need some soda. So uh, I need to replace the anchor that I had because <laughs> when I my engine overheated uh, on this trip uh, I had to anchor and then I take full responsibility, didn't tie it off correctly and the uh, rope, the line got wrapped around my prop uh, and the anchor at some point just broke off apparently and so I need to uh, attach the new one fortunately my boat already had a spare uh, and so I'm going to do that now
uh, I didn't tie the uh, ideal knots because the chain link is too small to wrap the rope through it twice, which is kind of what I needed for it. But I did a double figure eight, and hopefully that turns out to be an effective choice. And there we go. All good.